so this video is a brief description of radiative transitions in an atom and selection rules and the normal Zeeman effect. Uh, so, in Bohr's theory, the frequency of the radiation emitted by an atom as it drops from an energy level of Em to En is equal to Em minus En over H, okay? Um, so, we will now show that this equation arises naturally in quantum mechanics. Uh, so, suppose that a system is in a certain quantum state N, okay? Then the time dependent wave function uh, psi n is equal to psi n e to the uh, power of minus i e n over h bar t. Okay? And the expectation value uh, of the position of this electron uh, is given by this equation, uh, which is equal to the integration of x times the complex conjugate of psi n, uh, psi n dx. Okay? Um, and this integration here is a constant in time because these two functions are functions of position only. Um, and so this means that the electron in this case does not oscillate and so no radiation occurs. Uh, so this shows that quantum mechanics predicts that a system in a specific quantum state N does not radiate uh, and this is known from before and observed in experiment. Okay. Um, so now let's consider an electron that shifts from one energy state to the other. Uh, this happens, uh, for example, when a system is in its ground state N and then is excited through um, a beam of radiation uh, or through collision with another particle. Uh, so it is excited to another quantum state M, okay? Uh, and then, in that case, the system will emit radiation as it transitions from the excited state Em to the ground state En, okay? And during the time of transition, um, the electron can exist in both states N and M. Uh, so, A conjugate A is the probability that the electron exists in the state N, and B conjugate B is the probability that it exists in the state M, okay? And uh, the sum of uh, these two is equal to 1. So initially, when the electron is in the ground state, A is equal to 1 and B is equal to 0. Uh, and when the electron is in the excited state M, then B is equal to 1 and A is equal to 0. And when, uh, and when it goes back to the ground state, then A is equal to 1 again and B is equal to 0. Uh, so when the electron is in either of the quantum state N or M, um, we know from this, uh, from this equation that it will not oscillate and no radiation occurs, okay? Um, but uh, during the time of transition from M to N, which is when both A and B are not equal to 0, um, then the electron will oscillate and radiation occurs. So the system will emit uh, electromagnetic waves. Uh, so using this wave function uh, during the time of transition for the electron, the expectation value um, during this time is given by this equation. Uh, so we know from this equation uh, that uh, the first um, the first and last integrals here uh, do not vary with time, okay? Um, and now we have these uh, two integrals here which vary with time uh, and we, using these two expressions for the exponential, we can write these two terms this way, okay? Um, and this is the imaginary part and this is the real part which, as you can see, uh, does vary with time, okay? And so this shows that the electron's position um, oscillates sinusoidally with the frequency Em minus En over H, okay? Because uh, this is equal to 2 pi Em minus En over Ht. And this is the frequency of oscillation. Uh, so this shows that if the electron is either in the quantum state N or M, uh, then from this equation, it shows that the expectation value of the electron's position is constant, and so the electron does not oscillate and will not emit electromagnetic radiation. Uh, 
uh, but when the electron undergoes a transition between the two states n and m uh, then the expectation value uh, or its position oscillates with a frequency mu okay um, and so the electron does oscillate like an electric dipole and radiates electromagnetic waves of frequency mu equal to em minus en over h and this result is the same as the one postulated by Bohr. Uh, so as we have seen, this integral is related to the electron oscillating uh, and uh, radiating electromagnetic waves as a result, okay? Um, so the general condition necessary for, na for an atom in an excited state to radiate is that this integral is not equal to zero. Uh, so transitions for which this integral has a finite value uh, is known as allowed transitions and those for which uh, this integral is zero are forbidden transitions, okay? Um, and in the case of the hydrogen atom, uh, three quantum numbers are needed to specify the initial and final states, which are N, L, M, L. Um, so the allowed transitions are the ones where this integral is not equal to zero. Uh, so the integral here is over all space um, and if u is equal to x then the radiation would be the one corresponding to a dipole oscillating along the x-axis okay and if it's y then it's a dipole along the y-axis and so on okay <clears throat> so because the wave functions uh, psi n l m l for the hydrogen atom are known functions um, then it is possible to evaluate this integral for u uh, either equal to x, y, or z for any pair of states that differ in one or more quantum numbers. Uh, so after these calculations were done, it was found that allow transitions between different states of different principal quantum number n um, can occur if the orbital quantum number l uh, changes by either plus or minus 1, and if the magnetic quantum number ML either does not change, so the change is zero, or it changes by plus or minus one. Uh, so this shows how uh, selection rules uh, arise naturally in quantum mechanics due to the wave nature of the electron, um, and how not any transition is allowed, but only those transitions with uh, these selection rules, okay? Um, and note here that the change in the principal quantum number is not restricted in any transition. Uh, and note here that from the conservation of angular momentum, this selection rule uh, means that if an atom uh, makes a transition between two states and radiates, then the emitted photon will carry the angular momentum of plus or minus h-bar. Uh, so the angular momentum in which the photon carries is equal to the difference between the angular momenta of the atom's initial and final states. And in the classical theory of electromagnetic radiation, um, a photon with angular momentum of plus or minus h-bar corresponds to a left or right uh, circularly pol polarized electromagnetic wave respectively. Uh, so this figure shows the energy diagram in a hydrogen atom and it shows the allowed transitions and as you can see only those where L differs by plus or minus 1 uh, can occur. Uh, so now let's consider what happens to an atom when placed in a magnetic field. Uh, so in the previous videos of electromagnetism we have seen that the magnitude of the torque tau um, on a magnetic dipole mu placed in a magnetic field of flux density B is equal to mu B sine theta. Uh, and theta is the angle between the two vectors mu and B, okay? Um, and so from this you can see that the torque has a maximum value when the dipole um, uh, moment is perpendicular to the field and the angle is 90 degrees and the torque is equal to zero um, when the dipole is either parallel or anti-parallel to B. Uh, 
Uh, so now let's set a reference configuration where the potential energy of the system uh, is uh, zero, okay? Because as we have seen in mechanics videos, uh, only the changes in the potential energy are meaningful or observed. So the choice of the reference configuration is arbitrary. Uh, so what is meaningful is delta u, uh, not u, okay? Um, so let's assume now that the magnetic uh, potential energy is zero when theta is equal to pi over 2, so when the magnetic moment is perpendicular to the field B. Um, so the potential energy at any other angle is equal to the amount of external work needed to rotate the dipole um, from theta naught equal to pi over 2 to theta. Uh, so the work done is the integration of tau d theta from pi over 2 to theta equal to minus mu b cosine theta, okay? Um, so this shows that uh, when the magnetic moment mu is in the same direction of b, so when mu aligns with the external magnetic field b, then the um, uh, magnetic potential energy will have a minimum value. Uh, and this is why a magnetic dipole uh, tends to align itself with an external magnetic field because the potential energy of the system would then be minimum for that configuration. Uh, so now let's see how the magnetic dipole moment of the electron re relates to its uh, angular momentum. So we know that the magnetic moment of a current loop is equal to Ia, um, where I is the current and A is the area of the loop. Uh, and so an electron that makes F revolutions per second in a circular orbit produces a current of minus EF. And so mu is equal to minus EF pi R square. And the angular momentum of the electron is MVR and we know that V, um, uh, the linear speed of the electron is equal to 2 pi fr, so the uh, so L is equal to 2 pi m uh, fr square. Um, and so the magnetic moment vector is equal to minus E over 2 m uh, L. Uh, and this ratio is known as the gyromagnetic ratio. And the minus sign indicates that mu is in opposite direction to L, um, and this is because the electron has a negative charge. Uh, so now if we substitute uh, this here, uh, we get the magnetic potential energy of an atom in a magnetic field. Um, so it depends on both uh, theta and B. Uh, and from the previous video of the hydrogen atom, we know that the angle between the total angular momentum vector L, um, this vector and the z-axis can only have these specific values, okay? Uh, so these are the possible orientations in the case of L equal 2. Uh, so there are two L plus 1 possible orientations in an external magnetic field, which is, uh, in this case, five uh, orientations. And the magnitude of the vector, um, the angular momentum vector L, is equal to square root of 6 h bar, okay? Um, uh, so we substitute these results from quantum mechanics for the quantization of the direction of the angular momentum of the electron and the quantization uh, of its magnitude into this expression of the potential energy of a magnetic dipole in an external magnetic field. Um, and we get this expression. Uh, and this quantity here is known as the Bohr magneton. Uh, so, when an atom is placed in an external magnetic field, let's say along the z-axis, then the energy of a particular state will not only depend on the principal quantum number n, but also on the magnetic quantum number ml. Uh, because a certain state of a particular orbital quantum number l uh, will break into or split into two L plus one substates, okay, differing in energy uh, by mu B uh, B. Um, so these are the uh, are different energy states uh, as a result of placing the atom in an external magnetic field. Um, but because the changes in ML 
um, are restricted to either zero or plus or minus one, then a spectral line uh, due to a transition between two states of different L will split only to three spectral lines. Uh, so this uh, spectral line of a certain transition uh, will now split to three spectral lines when the atom is placed in an external magnetic field. Uh, and this is known as the normal Zeeman effect. Uh, so mu naught will split into mu1 equal to this value and mu naught, uh, the original frequency, and uh, mu3 okay, equal to this value. Uh, so, as an example, consider an atom of a certain element that when excited and when it drops back to the initial state, it gives a spectral line of a wavelength of 450 nanometers. Uh, so, this means that an electron in that uh, atom or, or element will emit a photon of wavelength of 450 nanometers as it transitions from one state uh, to the other. So, from a one quantum state M to N. Uh, so the frequency of that photon or radiation is mu naught uh, equal to EM minus EN over H, okay? Um, and uh, for this transition, uh, so delta N, which is um, the difference between M and N, is not restricted as we mentioned in the previous slide for any transition. But delta L is restricted and it has to be uh, either plus or minus 1 because this is the selection rule for allowed transitions. Uh, so now suppose that the same excitation happens for atoms of that element placed in an external magnetic field. Then um, for each uh, L state in that atom, uh, it will split into two L plus 1 uh, substates differing in energy uh, by mu b b, okay? Uh, and because only these transitions are allowed, uh, we don't see all of the uh, transitions between any uh, pairs of ML, but we only see transitions that satisfy this condition or selection rule, okay? Um, so we can say that uh, a spectral line that is due to a transition between two states that differ in L um, is split into three components and the separation between these com uh, Zeeman components is delta mu. Uh, so we can find delta mu by differentiating this equation. So uh, delta mu uh, is equal to minus c over lambda square uh, delta lambda, okay? And so this is the uh, distance between the Zeeman components and for the spectral line, it is equal to 1.8 times 10 to the minus 12 meters. Uh, so thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and see you in the next video.